Hey everybody, in this lesson we're going to talk about energy change in a reaction. So we first got to start off with bonds because bonds have a lot to do with how reactions occur. So what are bonds? And bonds are basically a chemical bond is an attraction that holds atoms together. And this is usually due to electrostatic forces. So what that means is opposite charge attract. And this happens with ionic, or due to sharing of electrons. So because of these bonds, what happens in a reaction? In a reaction are due to bonds forming and breaking. And when this occurs, energy either gets release or absorbs. And this occurs because of two reasons. The first reason is if bonds break, this leads to energy absorbs. Now what's going on? So an example you could think of is this. If you have a rubber band and all of a sudden you start to stretch that rubber band, what's going on is as you stretch that rubber band, the rubber band's absorbing the energy that you're giving it. So it has more. And when that happens, the rubber band will eventually snap, just like a bond. When the bond has energy absorbing to it, it will cause the bond to break. That means the opposite is true. When bonds form, this is when energy releases. So what that means is that when you form bonds, you need energies to release. And there's more to it, but you could think of it as almost like when two, um, I don't know, silly putties come in contact together, if they have too much energy, they will just simply bounce off each other. But if they have just the right amount of energy, they will collide and stick together. What they can do? Release that energy. And this energy can be, can be oops, light, heat, um, bonds, and so forth. There's many different types of versions of this energy. So we have special names for these. And we call them exothermic and endothermic. Let's start off with exothermic. Exothermic is basically a reaction that releases energy to its surroundings. And when this happens, because the surroundings get more energy, usually things get hot. Like an example, combustion. So what's going on here though is that energy release is actually greater than the energy being absorbed. So that means that all those reactions happening in which bonds are breaking, bonds are forming, the energy getting released is more than the energy getting absorbed. And here is a picture showing that. So I'm gonna scroll down, that's on your next page. But you can see this. This right here 
this axis right here is energy. In a sense, it's actually what we call potential energy. And this is the reaction occurring. So initially, the reaction occurring has high energy. And as the reaction proceeds, there's actually what we call activation energy. That's more of a chemistry 12 topic. But you see at the final, so if you said this right here, this was the initial, aka the what we call the reactants. And this is the final, or what we call the products. You see the products actually have less energy than our reactants. And this is an example of what happens with exothermic reaction, in which the energy is lower for our system because the energy gets released. So that extra energy got released. The opposite of that is what we call an endothermic reaction. An endothermic reaction is where um, the reaction absorbs energy. from its surroundings. So an example of that would be that things get cold, like melting ice. So what's going on when you melt ice is that you're actually putting your hand on the ice, and the ice is actually absorbing the energy from your hands to melt it. As that's happening, your hands get cold. That's what we're talking about here, that the energy is getting absorbed from its surroundings. So what's going on this time is that energy absorbed during these reactions is greater than energy release. And here is a picture showing this one, which is, looks like the opposite of the previous one. And what's going on here is that the initial, the initial energy is lower. And this is your final energy. So your products have more energy because it absorbed it from the surroundings. To finish off this lesson, we're going to discuss activation energy, which is that little hump. So basically, it's that hump in our graph. And what that hump is, is that basically it's the energy required for a reaction to occur. It's almost like, so let's look at this, this example right here. This activation energy right here, that's the activation energy right there. This activation energy right here, to get over this hump, the moment it gets over this hump, it now can proceed. So it's sort of like, for example, you drive down this road and you hit this big hill. As you travel up this hill, you're using a lot of energy, you're using a lot of energy, eventually you get to the top. Once you get to the top, you can coast. And it's that moment that you get to the top that section is called the activation energy. Likewise, for this one, that section is called the activation energy. So some activation energies are large, some are very small. It's the energy required for a reaction to occur. And that's the activation energy. Because if it doesn't reach that point, it, the reaction will not proceed. So as always, make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.